Hi, I'm Peter Sefton. I run Peter Sefton Furniture School. And I've been a fellow user now for 14, 15 years. I started furniture making at the age of 16, went straight to college from school, and then went from there on to a wood machining company uh, based in Bristol. After that, going self-employed at the age of 18 and have been pretty much that all these years. I got invited to go and do some part-time lecturing in a college environment. And then after being there a few years, I decided I actually want to set up my own workshops. Um, so I left the college, took the big leap to get my own workshop and then decided what machines, because I'd, I'd played with all sorts over the years, what I actually wanted for my own setup and my own workshop. Uh, when I first set up the workshop, I had a Hammer A341 combined planar thicknesser, which I've still got today, which is really working extremely well. I had the Hammer 440 bandsaw, which again is a little gem of a bandsaw. Uh, K3 winner table saw with a comfort package, which was a really uh, nice saw. I've upgraded that since to the bigger Felder, which is just a, I mean, the other one was great, but it's just a different league again. And I've still got my F3 spindle moulder. We do a lot of spindle moulder work, not just straight fence work, but a lot of curved work. And I wouldn't be without my power feed, that's for sure. The range of machines are very safe, so obviously you've got to be very safety conscious, particularly obviously in the teaching workshop. They're relatively easy to set up. You know, compared with old-fashioned um, blocks on planers that will take you three hours to set up, the quick change knives are great. I can show somebody within 10-15 minutes how to change those blades over and know with confidence they can go away and do them themselves in their own workshop. As a school has expanded, we get more students here, and there was a bit of a queue sometimes actually to get on the surfacer, so it was time to get another one. Uh, the A341 was great, but I thought, well, now I'm going to get a new one. I'll go for the, the Felder, just that step up again. I didn't go with the spiral block. I think I've had my time over again. The spiral block is the way I would go. I think just the cleanness of the cut, particularly if you're using awkward grain. Some planers, no matter how sharp you get them, the grain is just going to break out. The spiral block, within reason, you don't have to think about the grain direction. We can get such a good finish off the thicknesser, so precise and accurate and square, it's great to joint up to. The K700 I've got was a replacement for the old um, hammer, uh, so that was a, a great bit of kit. I needed something which is just a little bit more robust, just the extra level of quality. Hopefully the machines I've got now will take me into my retirement years. The hammer did very well. I had that, I don't know, 12, 13 years. I just thought it was time for an upgrade. I just wanted that real quality. So with the guarding options I've got on it and the scoring saw, I really can do a whole range of different tasks on there and show the students a real a lot of different things that they can do in their own workshop. And most importantly, safely. I think when the students come, most of them have done no wood machining before. The one thing that really amazes them, I think particularly on the table saw, which I, I just love using the table saw, is how accurate it can be. We will make stuff which is like a millimetre and a half thick inlays. When it's square and it's accurate, we can just get such accurate work out of it. I've got a spindle moulder and I wouldn't have a workshop without one. They have got a kind of a name from days back of being quite dangerous. So what's happened is the technology in spindle moulding blocks has improved so much since I started this 35 years ago. When all the regulations changed in 1998, chip limited tooling, which is now there, again, so easy to set up, so much safer. And as long as you are using the machine with the guards in place, the correct blocks and a power feed, then you should be able to do some very, very nice work. The bandsaw is such an essential bit of kit for most workshops. I think whether you're a wood turner and you'll just cut your blanks out, you're going to need it. Restorers will, will want one. Joiners will want one for cutting their large section timber. And for us, and we will swap the blade out on that two or three times a day. You know, little narrow blade for doing really tight curved work, wider blade for doing our ripping work, medium sized blade. We can do some great tenons and dovetails and a whole range of bits on there. I think changing the blade is really important but also making sure that the guides are easily and quick to adjust. If you can't adjust them quickly, you won't be changing over the blades and you won't be getting the best out of your bandsaw. So that was one of the key things for me actually when I get your bandsaw, how quickly, like all the machines, how quickly can you adjust it? But for us, we're on single phase electricity here. So for me, one reason I also like Felder is because on a single phase supply, they're four horsepower motors. That's big motors for a single phase. We've got a real depth of cut, quite a big throat. We can cut some at 10, 12 inches deep possibly, the right blade in there. Very, very safe, really clean cut for doing that. So we can do some very, very fine work with some big work as well. Often gets commented on the YouTube and stuff about how clean our workshop is. I mean, for me, keeping the workshop clean is pretty essential. It's obviously safer for the students. 
One of the key parts of that is dust extraction. I've got a couple of AF22 dust extractors in the workshop that run down either side of the, the shop. Uh, each of them serve a couple of machines and for me, keeping the workshop clean and tidy is so important. I went down to the headquarters down at Milton Keynes, had a good look around actually down there, so it's a nice showroom, you can see what's going on. I just got that feeling of confidence, but and also because I'd seen the machines 20 years beforehand in, in various shows, and you know, there was some background there, they weren't a new kid on the block, and you could just see how they'd actually developed and progressed over the years. And although when I started off, I started off in the smaller range of machines, you can just see that if you want to progress, there's a next level up, the next level up. So I progressed up now more to the Felder machines. I think if it was my own workshop, nobody else in here, that the hammer would be good enough for me. And I know it would last because I'm looking after it. We have a real range of different students that come into the school here, starting from 18 year olds that perhaps have done some woodworking at school, but just want to come and bring themselves to a new level or start a career within furniture making. And also other students perhaps in their 50s, 60s that actually have done a whole career. They've now taken early retirement or redundancy and they just need now something to do and enjoy themselves. So we're trying to make sure that we're teaching them the very best on the best kit that we have got available to us so they can really understand how accurate and how quick and how productive furniture making can be. The main course we run within the school is a 35 week course. So on that we go through a whole series of processes from hand skills, machining, veneering, finishing, photography, the whole lot. But also we run specialist short courses, hand tool care, uh, setting up hand planes, planing timber, hand cutting dovetails. We also do veneering courses and laminating courses. We do a lot of laminated and curved work within the workshop. And also two or three day wood machining courses. So a two day course we do covers the band saw, surface planer, thickness planer, table saw and the mortiser. And then our third day is just about the spindle moulder. We're lucky that the courses book up well, so the demand is good for that. But I wanted to also be able to spread some of the experience, hopefully, that we've got here to more people. So we now have to be making DVDs and digital downloads on the machines because I don't think it's been done for 30 or 40 years. Again, the regulations have changed so much. The tooling has changed so much. So last year we did a whole series of DVDs on the range of machines that I've got here. So hopefully show how we go about it based on the experience and the regulations that we comply to, the way that the guard should be used and keeping the guards on there most importantly. So many people take the guards off, I mean they're there for good reason. People say I can't see the blade, well you don't want to see the blade, you certainly don't want to touch the blade. Keep the guard on and use it. Also I want to make sure people are getting the most out of that investment for that machine because again I say a bandsaw you might think can only do straight cuts in wood or only do curve work. I mean, there's 30 or 40 procedures we can do with it. This machine can do so much more for you. I'm trying to actually be able to share that with other people and hopefully help them in their own workshops to get the most out of their, their kit and their woodworking experience.